Hello again, everybody. After much, um, two weeks and a little bit of conversation, we're up for another low-code exploration. So um, who am I handing you over to? Uh, Belinda, is it to you or Guillaume, is it? Back to you and Stephen. I'm not to you, obviously. <laughs> I'll hand over to Belinda. So, what's happened in the last couple of weeks? Uh, what's happened? Well, so having enthusiastically assigned myself a whole bunch of homework on the last call, I woke up the next morning feeling like. Ugh. <laughs> and that was interesting because because it was quite similar to the feeling that I've had in the past when I have an idea and it feels like it's going to be impossible to you know even start let alone get it done make it real <laughs> so so I thought okay there's something here about this that's about this process that we're in and, and how we've consciously or un, in my case unconsciously designed it. And um and there's also something something there about uh, what problem we want to address and how. Um so I wanted to actually on this call reset. So I didn't do any of the homework that I assigned to myself because partly because I think there has to be a better way to do it. <laughs> I think there has to be a better way to get that done. Um, so I wanted to reset and actually what we didn't do on the last call was with Guillaume here actually get make sure that we're all clear about what we're actually talking about. Like what are we talking about designing and then potentially building and why. And so I can give you my sense of that. And also, you know, I'm aware that um, things are moving kind of fast in the holochain world. And so I wanted to get a sense of then where what I originally said that I, you know, that, that I, the idea that I had where that fits in the, the current list of priorities and exciting things. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> no, just you cut out like the last 10 seconds, at least for me. Is that a question about the most reliable internet connection? Not me. Um, mm -hmm. All I said was uh, there's so much that we could do and I want to get really clear about what we're going to do and why. Can I jump in for a sec? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm totally not surprised you didn't do any of the homework. That's why when I got pinged, I was like, we've got to come back here to have this conversation rather than, rather. <laughs> um, and, and so what's been really interesting to me is the parallel between the conversations, Belinda, that we're, we're going through right now. And then we also have someone else in the Holochain ecosystem who wants to come with their particular project because it's almost like by you initiating this, really by you speaking this pattern into existence and at the same time you being the guinea pig for the pattern, it's all like there's this funny conflict because I think like how I could see the, it emerging, you know, so we have a, we have a, contained project that someone's been thinking about for a couple of years they then work with you and Stephen on like can it work because instead of just coming onto the low code exploration we actually they they do this kind of this this extra preparation beforehand so they're a lot sharper in what their proposition actually is we then explore that proposition to 
together. But because they've gone again through an experience beforehand, it's it's it, we, we can all witness it a little bit more. It's a loss that it's deeply personal. It's stuck within me kind of thing that you end up spending most, you know, you're here to architect a solution and support someone to move. But really what you're doing is disentangling the thing from them. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. <laughs> we haven't worked out because yeah. we haven't got to that point. We haven't worked out whole... what happens then. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, but then we haven't worked out what happens from the exploration, yeah. but we'll, we'll get there when we get there. So I really wanted you to come back because I was like, oh, wow, there's this really interesting tension here because you guys are thinking on a real meta level. And yet the thing with low code, I think, is supporting projects that have that are looking for meta outcomes over time through really local solutions because that's otherwise it's it's too big so I, i'm really excited to see where today unfolds yeah so david you broke up for me just that i'm really excited i'm not quite sure what you're really excited about but i think i get it yep <laughs> Um, yeah, let me let me share what has happened this couple of weeks for me. Um, so, uh, as in the um, last uh, session, we uh, like I, I shared uh, this thing is uh, very close to my heart. Uh, the low code uh, pattern uh, supporting people to 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 experiment and to play like actually the the most fun i think and the most exciting thing is that if we get it right um this is going to allow uh, a lot of experimentation and and play and it feels exciting so i got really really excited so much that i started working on a prototype on how it could work and more or less i have a proof of concept of things uh working like only a happy path but but uh just to see an idea of how uh it could shape uh up um i think that uh i don't know may- maybe that frame so also helps in not having it so um I don't know because I feel like last last session we discussed uh, very fundamental uh, concepts and so on because it was not clear also what the technology fundamentally could could do, um, but that that is not necessarily um, uh, like when I think of someone approaching Holochain with low code for the first time, I don't know if that's a necessary first step or even just experimenting and failing 10 times before getting it right, it's a better solution, you know? Um, we'll, we'll see. So just just to, to let you know that has happened. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this so, changes the, the way that, uh, Belinda, you want to frame things, but yeah. I love it. See, I knew I didn't have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Or I knew that I didn't have to automatically assume that I needed to do it all or even like a big chunk of it, right? Um, That's just my kind of reflex. (laughs) So when you say what, what I want is for us to come up with some kind of really lightweight like a skeleton of a um, a process and a and a like a, a process of a journey that somebody goes through when when they're trying to build an app and they don't know what the hell they're doing, and an idea at minimum of what the tools tool or tools might look like that would help them to do that, and then I want to test that with somebody else who has a real project that they actually really care about rather than me thinking up some idea that is not actually full of life. 
Awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, so what's next then? Guillaume, what do you, mm -hmm. when, when you say that you started working on a framework, what does that actually mean? Can you describe that a little bit to me? So it's, I don't think of it as a framework. I see it more of, of a um, build your own app kind of application um, mm -hmm. in which you basically like, in Hologen, you have these things which are zones, uh, which are basically the modules from which you build your DNA. Uh, so basically, the developers are able to publish zones, and then from the other side, the users are able to say, okay, this one, this one, this one, this one, compress, and you get your, your thing, right? And you install it and first you are trying just locally because you don't know if it's uh, good or not uh, and uh, from it, that package also contains the um, the UI so you can compose the UI uh, to to okay let's have the calendar here and let's have the chat there and okay um, and then once you got all configured like th this is this is what that what I have but it's it's totally up to uh, whatever fits best the process because I think that that would be much uh, richer. So once you configure the UI, you can share it with other people to say, hey, come play with me with this uh, fun game I just created. Um, and if they want, they can rearrange the UI uh, in their own way as well. Nice. Yeah, like th this, this is actually like uh, in two weeks, I haven't had the time to build it all. I actually reused a lot of things that I already had because I, I thought about, about this for, for, for quite some time. So, yeah. Huh. So I really, really love that it becomes a game that you can play with your friends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that. That is exactly what I think it needs to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To get people, so to get people who don't have technical expertise or necessary any technical knowledge at all, to get them excited about the fact that they could build an app without having to go to coding school or find a Came development team who they can pay with their non-existent money, <laughs> um, but also to get people excited about Holochain as genuinely something fresh and different, really something that is taking this is taking a different view of what what it means to build an app. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, and I, in part, I feel like, um, uh, like to be clear, I didn't, I didn't make the decision really. Um, that is just a way that things are in Holochain, you know. So you couldn't do it otherwise. I don't think, um, and. But but I I, I also absolutely love uh, absolutely love this uh, this framing, um, and I think it's like it mimics how a lot of uh, patterns emerge in in our culture in and in our world, right? So you try something first, it works, it doesn't. You share it, it spreads. Thing like things like that. Um, but I'm really excited to have this conversation as well because um, like what I've built is basically a technical foundation, but it's, it's lacking still uh, the, uh, the story or uh, the, what spots need to be filled 
first and 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 so on and what would help people because I, I like I'm coming uh, I'm, I'm thinking about this also as a hackathon tool for example like in a hackathon you come in and uh, you have a bunch of people yeah, that uh, can code so okay um, so yeah um, like I, I I don't know if you want me to describe it to you more or you want to uh, start with the flow of So there's a there's a there's a piece of work about you know figuring out what information what what information and parameters and et cetera do people need to put in would people need to put into a tool like this to make it work. Can I can I talk just for a minute about where I'd like to be with version, I don't know, version X? of this tool, so not where I think version one will be, but um, have you seen a website builder called Tilda? Okay. I'm gonna put the address in the chat right now. I just, I only recently discovered this. And so look, it's a website builder and there are lots of them, right? So it's. It's very similar to Squarespace and Wix and all of those things. But there's something about the way that this particular one has been designed and the way that they, the way that it looks and feels and the way that they do their, um, their instruction um, that makes it seem like less work and more play than any other website builder that I've, that I've seen before. Um, and and there's also like their you know their model is that they they build a bunch of blocks, right? That are that are essentially UI components that may or may not be a front end to a quite a complex back end application or application component. Um, but they also have I mean it's also a marketplace, right? And third parties can right things and um, so I think it's I think it's, it's it's just an interesting model in terms of like this very the lines getting so blurry now in website front end application back end right UI back end functionality <laughs> so there's there's some stuff to think about there in terms of like, if I'm a non-technical person who has a dream, <laughs> do I have an idea, do I have more of an idea about what functionality I want to put in my application or do I have some pictures, am I likely to have some pictures in my mind about what it might look like to somebody who's using it? So it may be that although we're building something that is technically what we what we need is something that is technically quite quite hardcore in, in that there's a lot of functionality encapsulated in, in different things, it presents as more like a website builder than we might first have imagined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um it's 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 <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, sorry, um, it's it's funny because um, the, like I am completely aligned with the blocks thing. Uh, uh, I like what I have is that uh, with each zone there um, a, a set of blocks that you can uh, put in your website because you have that zone. Are included, and now you can drag and drop. Um, uh -huh. So that completely resonates, uh, and, and and it's it's really fun. Um, okay, so let me make sure I've got that right. Yeah. For any one zone, depending on what it be, on what it might be, what its functionality is, there could be anywhere from two to 
22 different UI options. Yeah? Yeah. And all yeah. of those to be represented as different blocks. And ideally, we want people to be able to drag them into a smart web front end. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so um, the thing is that like you have to think of a zone as in an encapsulated um, module of a game uh, that brings uh, the type definition. So what is inside that zone, for example, the basic one I've been using all along is the, um, uh, the events calendar. So, okay, you have the events calendar zone and that contains a calendar type and, and events you can create calendar and so this of this uh, um, of this game. And maybe that's the only one, or maybe we can think of other ones that come like you maybe. have an, an agenda type uh, at least. Right. I, I, yeah, I can, I can think of a bunch actually. Uh, sorry, Guillaume, okay. I can just, I can see that Stephen needs to go and I think he oh. wants to just wave at us or say something before he needs to go. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm back online. Yes, I'm, I'm just in uh, getting my back done with an osteopath, so a little bit of pain. So sorry, I've got to slip out on, on the last um, minute. We spoke lengths earlier today with Vinter, so I'm very much on, on completely uh, aligned with what she's saying. What I've started preparing today is my, my sort of in-depth contribution to this, and I will send it, hopefully finish it tomorrow, I'm scripting a video, and I'm going to talk about the, the whole ontology of this. So, Guillaume, where you're coming from, from pulling together that functionality, what Belinda needs all the way through to um, someone being able to utilize uh, the methodologies that we have in terms of whether it's purposeful, whether, it, you know, what is the intention behind it? Will it generate sufficient value? Will it work based mm -hmm. upon what they understand of their particular group or what I call tribal? So, and, and then all the governance and everything else. So if I put that together tomorrow, that I think will be a reasonable contribution to discussion about the broader ontology. The beauty of this is that that will really bring to the surface the unique attributes of Holochain in terms of looking at it from its value management, its governance, you know, in terms of its agreements, and it's and, and interrelationships in, in terms of agency. So I'll pull all that together as a, and then that will go into the mix of the discussion. And then when I get some feedback from that, we start thinking about that, I can then put some concrete steps into that on what, what the offering could actually be, even in the short term, because we've got lots of that ready to go that might further, and I'll let Belinda then make her judgment on whether that would actually help the cause and the intent behind what she originally is, what she's in tune with. Belinda, I did I say that okay? Is that all right? Yeah, that's great, Stephen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I'm going, to, I'm going to go and have my back sorted out so I can sleep. Uh, I've got sciatica in my right leg, which is awful. Um, but thank you so much, guys, and have a wonderful Christmas. But I'll be Reach out to me any time if you need me, but Belinda will talk tomorrow. Thank you, Guillaume. Okay. Thank you. Okay. See you soon. Bye. So, Guillaume, just to just to dip back into the um, the piece about the calendar as the example. I don't not knowing what your idea is of what the calendar zone would do. I immediately went to, well, you could have a calendar view, but you could also have a form that allows somebody to book an appointment with someone and you could have another thing that shows a group calendar, which is 
multiple calendars combined to show pre time, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's like, I think that's, <laughs> these, these are like, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, finding this kind of thing all the time. So with other projects, there is a need to have a resource booking zone with which you book time slots of some resource right. that immediately uh, came came to mind. Uh, the thing is that um, the, the thing I'm worried about or worried or, or see like, okay, we have to be careful about this is that for example, you would think that um, these two zones um, um, like, uh, these two zones from the technical point of view have to be separated basically because they are not dealing with the same types. Okay. okay. Uh, the resource booking is dealing with um, resources with uh, time slots are not really exactly the same as the calendar one. So they have to be separated. But from the point of view of the user, that might be difficult to understand. They might see, no, I have a calendar. I should be able to do everything that I can do in the calendar, you know? So, um, and, and, and yeah, and, and, and another thing is that maybe those two zones are related to each other. Maybe one depends on another or maybe, and, and okay, this is, we have to be careful also. And I, 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 I don't have anything in the proof concept that's not even contemplated. Like it's a free for all, do whatever you like. If it breaks, mm, bad luck. But we might want to go a little more smart because yeah. if like in, in, but I don't know how to combine that exactly to the final user, you know, because it's, it can get quite, quite technical. And the thing is, I think we probably won't know the answers to some, to some of these questions until we build something and mm -hmm. have somebody say, or three people say, that, that piece isn't working for me for this reason. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm aware of time. Now what? Yeah, so for me, it could be it could be great. Like I, I cannot show it right now, but in in a day or two, I should be able to 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 at least sh show what I what I have. It could be right to play around with it, um, and then uh, <laughs> um, and then uh, you can see how f how far is is this like as a first. Mm, very rough uh, proof of concept and what are, what could be the next steps. Um, although that's that's going to be that's going to be a little difficult, but I'm I'm going to try. So that would be really helpful for me, and no time pressure because you know, it's the 22nd of December and everybody needs to um, just be able to take a break, <laughs> right? Um, but being able, being able to see something and get my hands on it is very useful for me because up until that point, it's abstract, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. Um, What else do you need from me to be able to, to do that? Like the, the most valuable thing um, for sure is the conversation. And the, um, because like I have a, an advantage, which is uh, I'm a blockchain developer, which is uh, like, uh, and, and the benefit of that is that I know how things are going technical, and, and I know the possibilities and so on, but the disadvantage is that I, I, I it's very difficult for me to think how a non-technical user would 
thing and hey you have a clearing gap here and i'm like no but it's 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 no it, but it's it's a gap um you know so the the conversation absolutely is the most uh valuable to me and i um, i don't think i can do this alone by any means so um i'm really glad to be here and and be having this uh, this this ongoing discussion you know um Um, and then apart from that, uh, from uh, if, if you are able to try it somehow, um, the direction and okay, also we, yeah, okay, we can, we can talk about, about one piece now, I think, yeah, which is um, from like, yeah, <laughs> sorry, um, um, the Holochain architecture makes it so that um, if you want to install some application, you run yourself in your computer the Holochain binary. So you have to think of it like you go to a web page, you download the Holochain binary or so on, and you have a, a little icon in your bar that says Holochain, and you have all the Holochain applications installed and so on. Um, now, Holochain also have this uh, project called Holo. I, you know about Holo and, and what does that, that, that solve? Okay. Um, this pattern of creating your own game and putting it into Holo may be a very difficult, you know, as opposed to as in Holochain. In Holochain, everything is very easy because it's just compute. You, you're you do whatever you want with your computer and you can install whatever but in holo it's like you have to set up some holo ports you have to send some holo fuel to them uh so on it might get tricky to share that game with other people in that way um so so think? here's my here's my question if if our first objective and you know there may be other aims and objectives as we go on, but if our first objective is to create, let's call it a sandpit for people to play in, mm -hmm. right? And and the primary the primary intention is to allow people to play. How hard would it be to set up a virtual in, environment where they could do that, where? Where they, where the app gets run in some kind of virtual instance of Holochain, they don't have to do anything on their local computer, but they have something that they can send somebody else to to look at through a web browser. That's going to be quite harder uh, because uh, that's Holo. Holo is that virtual environment, basically. Yeah. You you okay. just described it almost perfectly. Uh, okay. And that runs great for um, applications that the developers themselves have loaded uh, because the developers say, okay, I want to pay uh, this holo fuel or whatever. But from the point of view of an, a, a user, it's, it, it starts to become difficult. And like, unless in the experimental say, set up my holo port and say, okay, come play whoever you want. Like wh whoever wants to play, come play. I will let you install all the applications you want, but it's a limited, like it's only one computer and it's, so that's the parameters. Um, that we are playing with like and, and that's the special thing about holochain architecture with with which has it, a lot of benefits but this uh this disadvantage of you can't just spin amazon web services and, and hope it everything works and so on yeah okay so that helps me because maybe because it helps me to understand that at, at minimum that is stage X, not stage one. 
-hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah like mm -hmm. is stage um one like doing it only holo chain is this difficult Do doing it with holo is is a lot more difficult because you have a lot of steps in the middle you know i was only able to do this proof concept in two weeks because you can assume you already have the thing installed in your computer and you are saying to itself hey add this other thing um, yeah okay well well so here's here's part of how i can help right mm -hmm. i don't have I don't, I don't think I have Holochain installed on this machine, or if I do, it's a really, really old version from a hackathon two years ago. So mm -hmm. if you send me the instructions <laughs> for how to do it, I'll tell you how hard it is. <laughs> or how easy it is. <laughs> yes, I, I like, I see, but right now, Holochain is in a not so pleasant state as far as that goes. So even developers are struggling. Okay. Um, because, yeah. So it's all, it's all just like at this point, this is all just information, right? That, that inform decisions and choices that we get to make about when is it feasible to do it, to do this? When is it feasible to do what? <laughs> yeah. Um, at, at what point can we reasonably expect to be able to deliver something that does this? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So none of it phases me. It's all just information at this point. And it's all, and it's, and, and there are so many variables around maturity and life cycle, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, just a point there, which is, um, Right now, this is a, a, a painful area for some of the developers. So the Holochain core team is putting a lot of priority to usability improvements. So that would be um, like that would get a lot easier in next month, say. Um, and like either way, I will try to see if there is a way so that you don't have to, it's difficult, but uh, to, to send it to you so that you don't have to to, um, to run it locally and see if you can play with it. Um, but I don't know if I'll, I'll be able to make it. Okay. Like if not, I will send you a video or something like that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, David, you happy with this conversation? Yeah, How fantastic. And where we've arrived at? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Thanks, Liam. Uh, yeah. um, no, no, like, yeah, for me, uh, so, so, sorry about uh, going uh, about my way and, and doing proof of concept in, in uh, but. I like I, I had to get it done in the sense that um, <laughs> it was itching my my brain so much that uh, okay this is going to be like this like this like this like this and I had to just put it oh, into. I love it. I, I mean, I think it's exactly what needed to happen, right? I just needed to start making it real. So thank you for initiating that. Yeah, and and my perspective is that it's just a conversation starter. So. Um, It, it doesn't need to look anything like awesome yeah awesome thanks thanks david thank you guys all right right so again i'm looking forward to <clears throat> yeah looking forward to seeing the proof of concept and i'm looking forward to picking up in the new year yeah, yeah for sure all right, yeah. super. Cool. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Have a yeah, great uh, holiday if you're taking one. And uh, yeah, see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah you too. Okay, bye-bye.